Hello and welcome to Tony's Lab. Today we're diving into the ESP32, one of the most versatile and powerful microcontrollers in the DIY and maker world. The ESP32 family is a series of microcontrollers developed by Espressive Systems, renowned for their affordable and powerful dual-core processors with built-in Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and a wide range of advanced features. What makes Expressive so popular in the maker and hacker community is their long-standing support for open source and DIY development. Personally, I've designed and built two PCBs using their SOCs and modules, and I've had a great experience working with them. It all started back in 2014 with the release of the ESP8266, which was an incredibly affordable and easy to program microcontroller using the Arduino IDE, just like the ESP32 is today. After 11 years, there is some other options to program these chips, like Platform IO and ESP IDF, which gives developers even more flexibility and control. Since then, Espressive has continued to offer future rich microcontrollers at a low price point. The ESP32 S3 is not only powerful and affordable, but also well documented with a massive library of tutorials, community forums, and open source projects available online. Now, if we compare the ESP32 to something more sophisticated, like the NRF series from Nordic Semiconductors, you'll find these chips are also packed with features. They're commonly used in professional and industrial grade projects. But there's one thing, they're not as beginner friendly and the setup can be more complex with a steeper learning curve. On top of that, you won't find nearly as many maker friendly resources, tutorials or community examples out there compared to the ESP32. On the official Espressive website, you can visit their SOCs, like the P-Series, the S-Series, and the C-Series. You can visit the module section, which contain the previous SOCs. And you can visit the dev kit section. I recommend going through this section before buying any dev kits. I recommend buying your dev kit either in the DigiKey website or the Mouser website. I personally have this one, the N32R8V. Now let's start the installation of the Arduino IDE. The link to this website will be in the description. Please choose the right installation for your OS. You can read and agree to any licenses. I will be downloading for all users on my computer. If at any point during the installation the application asks for your agreement to install drivers, please do. Next up, we will be installing the ESP32 libraries in the board manager. Please select the library from Espressive Systems. This installation will take quite a bit of time, do not worry. On the image provided on the screen, I've squared off a chip. This chip is a USB to UART bridge, and it needs drivers to function properly. I'm going to be putting the link to this website in the description. All you have to do if you have a Windows computer is download the universal Windows driver. And if you have any other OS, please download the right driver for your OS. And then you have to unzip the zip file anywhere on your computer.
the first test we're going to be doing is a simple serial print. If you don't know how to do a serial print, please follow along while I write the code. On the screen, I've put up the different types of ESP32-S3 dev kits. You can see the flash size and the memory size. Please change the flash size according to the module you have, but keep all the same settings. Do not forget to enable the CDC on boot to be able to use the serial capabilities. If you don't have the same module, I promise you that the settings are online. Please go look for them. And if you made a PCB yourself, <laughs> good luck. To put your device in boot mode, please hold the boot button while plugging in the ESP. We will now upload the code into the ESP32. It is going to take a while, please wait patiently. When the code is done uploading, please reset your ESP by pressing the reset button and go in the serial monitor and you should see your message being printed out on the screen. We will now be downloading the library for the addressable LED which is really similar to the WS28 from a man called Zentao Lin. When you're done downloading, go in the option File, Sketch Example, go completely at the bottom, go at in the library just downloaded, and pick the RGBW. In this file, you now have to change the number of LEDs to 1, because we only have one LED in the chain, and then the pin assignment to 38, because our addressable LED is at the pin 38. Another way to put the board in boot mode is to hold Reset Boot, and let go of the reset first. Now all we have left to do is to upload the sketch. And voila, the RGB is now blinking in a rainbow pattern. If you learned anything in this video, please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or want me to do a specific video, let me know in the comment section.